Here are three sweatshirts and I have filmed a full step-by-step -step that's beginner friendly for the making of this specific one and you also see two little cute ones I've made my nieces so it'll be fun stay tuned Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome and if you're new to the channel and you love to sew, you will find a lot of sewing content here. And with every single video on this channel, my goal is always for you to take something away that's really practical for your own sewing. Today I'm showing you the Sloan sweater from Love Notions. It's a feature Friday pattern and not only that, it's actually being re-released. Tammy, the owner of Love Notions, has been working one by one on a few patterns that are already existing to add 4XL and 5XL to the size range, and that's awesome. Now for body measurements, that will go up to a bust of 57 and a half and a hip of 59 and a half. These patterns are staple and now it can work for even more people, so that is amazing. I'm also doing this video in collaboration with my friend Claire from Penguin and Pear Dressmaking. We have done a collaboration back in April, I believe, when she was just about to reach a thousand subscribers on her channel since then her channel has grown really really beautifully and she's at over 2,000 subscribers now so she is also producing a video on this pattern for the re-release and she's gonna have a totally different spin on it we are both working with unusual fabric choices for this type of design because the typical fabrics you would choose a sweatshirting French terry those kinds of medium weight you know needs with stretch we haven't chosen those fabrics so we, we are just taking this pattern in different perspectives and after watching mine please hop over to her channel that i will link below in what we do it's very isolating and as people that have a sewing channel can even be more isolating because you're like always stuck in your computer editing so it's really fun yeah just go and show Claire a lot of love and say hi from me this sweater pattern has two views view A is slightly more shaped has a curved hem and no band at the bottom and view B is more boxy has a hem band at the bottom and now all these versions can have either a crew neck or a hoodie and for view B that has the band you can put a kangaroo pocket there's elbow patches there's an optional yoke so there's huge amounts of mixing and matching that you can do to create the look that you want because of my fabric choice I just went with a simple view A that is what I'm doing with nothing added, no yoke, nothing. I'm just making it as is. And that is also more beginner friendly and enables you who are new to sewing to just get the basics. I have filmed the whole thing for you, every little thing. And let's hop into that. This is a sleeve and it's the only piece I needed to make a modification to so I measured from the top discounted 3 8 seam allowance and then I overlaid the cuff there and overlapped by both seam allowances so 3 8 and 3 8 makes it 2 centimeters, slightly less than an inch so I measured that and I figured out I needed 2 more inches of length to match my long arms there was no lengthen and shorten line on the sleeve piece, there is one on the body. So when there's no lengthen and shorten line on a sleeve, what I do is I divide the sleeve into three in my head. So I do an imaginary line, one, two, and I go on the two thirds. So I leave two thirds up and a third down and then I just draw a line, slash spread. There's a grain line mark there that I'm extended all the way down before cutting and slashing so that I can keep the sleeve on the grain line and then I had to do a tiny bit of truing there on the side seam there you can see this is view A of the sweater it's the one that doesn't have the band on the bottom and this one has slight shaping as you can see that is the back it's cut on the fold the neckline is higher the front is also cut on the fold and the neckline is lower on the arm side there's a single notch there and on the back there's a double notch there to match the sleeve the sleeve there on that side I've marked a double notch with chalk and the single one there and that's how you put it together once you're sewing that mark on the middle of the sleeve will match the shoulder seam this is my neck band piece that I'm using a rib knit like that and the cuff I'm also going to do with the rib knit so if I fold the sleeve in half you can see that the front arm side dips lower than the back 
So even for this style that is a sweatshirt with a drop shoulder with a loose fitting sleeve, even that small difference in the drafting will make a difference in the fit. So I just have a scrap and I did a straight seam like I would on a side seam. This is the greatest stretch here and this side stretches too but horizontal is more. So this is the direction of which like a side seam would be. And I did a straight stitch there, it looks fine. I searched it, it looks perfectly fine. The machine sewed it like it would any other fabric. So actually, I don't think I need to take extra precautions. Depending on the area of the top, I will be switching from a straight seam to a tiny zigzag stitch. But I will be surging as per usual. Now with this one, I wanted to see how I could hem it. So I did surge the edges there of the bottom and I turned it up and I did a straight stitch to see how it would look and it actually looks really good but I'm still going to go ahead and do a twin needle because that will let it stretch but just having a play and seeing what works and I'm so glad that I don't really need to do anything special to sew this just treat it like any regular knit fabric and when I do a little zigzag stitch it'll be too width and too length I think that is fine to get enough stretch and to be narrow enough for a seam. These are my shoulder seams. I have put bias binding around them and this is going to accomplish two goals. One to finish those edges and the other one to stabilize the shoulders. So look, they're not going to stretch and that's going to prevent them from sagging. And when you look at it from the other side, it's also going to look super neat. This is very sheer mesh. And you can see how neat it's going to look on the other side, like that. So I'm going to sew that. This is narrower than the seam allowance provided. The seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch. So I will sew that there and then probably sew again at 3 eighths of an inch. I should have trimmed this before putting this on actually, but I didn't do it. <laughs> And now I'm going to do my seam at 3 8 of an inch. So there's the seam at 3 8 and the bias binding there. I'm just using a straight stitch and that's how it's going to look. And there's no stretching here. So I have all the arm side there. This one is the front, single notch. This one is the back double notch and I've got the shoulder seam towards the back and I've placed a pin there to keep it in place. Now these sleeves are put in flat so I have my sleeve piece here. This little notch on the middle of the sleeve matches the shoulder seam there and I'm going to pin right on the edge within the seam allowance and then over here we have the single notch from the sleeve that will match the single notch on the top. Just match those up there and then do the same for the back. Sleeve has been pinned on all the way and it's gonna be sewn on flat. So it's just a long seam. And for this one, I'm gonna use a narrow zigzag. There you can see the little zigzag and that is going to allow the seam to stretch. This does need to stretch, you move your arms around so it is a seam that will need to stretch. Not like the shoulder seam I just did with a straight stitch, that doesn't need to stretch. This fabric, this mesh is not going to unravel so I could just leave it like that. But I don't think it's going to look that nice on the other side. So I'm just going to serge it as per usual to keep the two seams together and just need a looking. But not because this is going to unravel. So both sleeves have been sewn on there and serged. This is the neckline that you're seeing there. That's the front one, that's the back one. And now all that needs to be done is put the top like that, right sides together. And then one continuous stitch is done to close the sleeve. That's the underarm and then down to the hem and that's on both sides so it's really easy to put a top like this together this is the bottom of the top the hem there and I've started pinning up there and then I get to this place where the underarm is 
I always press my sleeve seams towards the sleeve so they're both going this way and I've put a pin there and then I go into the seam of the arm. So it's one continuous stitch and I'm going to do it with a little zigzag. When I start sewing I grab these two threads there and I pull on them so that the machine doesn't eat my fabric. This is thin and it could happen. I don't want it to happen. So look. See, and once it's already going through the feed dogs, then I let go of these. Here is a cuff, I have sewn it, I've just used a straight stitch there. This is not something that's going to be stretching. This seam just needs to be opened and then folded upon itself. So wrong sides together and then that forms a cuff. These seams meet there and the other one is already ready. So these now need to be attached to the sleeve. The sleeve is slightly wider than the cuff. So this stretches really well. This just needs to be stretched in order to match the circumference of the bottom of the sleeve. So the seam is there and this seam is pointing towards the back of the garment. So I just like to put a pin to hold it there so I don't forget there. So the sleeve is inside, the cuff is on the outside. I have matched these seams of the cuff to the seam of the sleeve right there. But actually I want the pins that I'm going to use to be on the inside, so not the way I've placed it there. And I'll tell you in a second why, so I'm just going to transfer that pin onto the inside there. Now some people like to do quarters to divide the sleeve in four and then to be able to stretch it accurately to match the cuff. But actually this is such a small, uh, like a small circumference. So I've stretched it out there. This is one there and now on this other side, I'm gonna put a pin there. And then I'll put more here in the middle and I'll stretch it out again and put one in there. So I'm essentially dividing this into quarters but by eyeballing. And just because this is a small little circumference, you know, you won't see me eyeballing quarters for the neckband. So that, that is going to be very precise. So there you go. I put the pins inside is because this is how I'm going to sew. I'm going to have the foot there and that's how it's going to be easier to sew when a cuff is more like that. So you know how you could remove that from the machine and then put your cuff in like that and sew it like that? That is a way that you can do it. I don't really like doing it like that because I, I just feel it stretches everything out too much. It is an option for adults. You could do it like that. For kids, there's no way that little cuff is going to fit through there or, or a baby one. So I just like to do it like this instead. So I'll just put the cuff in like that and have the foot inside. And I'm using a zigzag stitch to sew this. Okay, so one cuff has been sewn on that needs to be surged and I'll put it through the serger in the same way. So I'll put it in through there and then go turning it that way. And I still have that pin there <laughs> that I used to make sure that the seam from the sleeve was going to be heading in the right direction. So I just remove that there. And that's how it's going to look. I'll sew the other cuff with the other way, which is just pinning it normally. So you would stretch it out, put the sleeve inside in the exact same way, but the pins would be on the outside, and then you would slide this into your machine like this. It does fit, I mean it's not like it's wrong, but I do have my, my little preference. I feel like because this is already stretched, um, I can't really control the cuff or I can't control the fabric. So it's still being sewn the same. I just feel like it just gets too stretched. I don't know. It still looks good. 
Oh, that's that's still there. <laughs> uh, you decide. Um, the first method I showed you, I do with kids all the time because the cuff is too small. With these, they look essentially the same. They they do look the same. It's just that one was sewn one way and one the other. This is a neckband. I have just sewn it there on the ends. And that just needs to be opened and folded onto itself, the same as cuff, only that this is narrower. I'm gonna put a pin through there like that. So this just needs to be folded onto itself. And I like to divide these into quarters, into four. Some people do it into eights, and that is even more precise. So I've got one there, and then on this other half, I'm gonna put another pin. When you divide this again, so now putting the pin with the pin, then you get the quarters, right? Because half of a half is a quarter. <laughs> so I'm going to put a pin there. And then the other pin over here. So that's essentially divided the neckband into four. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to mark my neckline with quarters, with pins, and then match this to that neckline. I'm just going to put those shoulder seams together there and I'm just going to put a pin there to hold them together not that that is a reference of anything so this helps me mark the center of the front there right there so that is a reference point and then I do the same with the back here that is the middle of the back now I'm going to take this pin that I have put there and then open this again. Then I'm going to match these two pins there. So these mark the front and the back centers. And I'll just put them together there. And now over here, where the fabric ends and you have the fold, that is going to be one of the quarters. So you're not matching the references that you did with the neckband. To the shoulder seams because the shoulder seams is never a quarter of the neck it's always sort of um, onto the front you know the front neckline takes up more circumference than the back so here as well you can see the reference there and then that's where it ends over here on the fold and the other pin so this is how i divide the neck line into four i remove that so I have a pin there, I have a pin there, I have a pin there, and I have a pin there. Those are my quarters for the neckline. And I have my quarters for the neckband. I like to put the seam of the neckband on the center back. I have hair there, no one's gonna see it. So that's where I put it. So I'm gonna put the neckband on top of the neckline and just match those pins there. And I can start removing them, you know, just keep one. That one's matched there. And now the next quarter here is going to match the next pin. The neckline is going to be bigger than the neckband. And that's what keeps it from gaping and looking bad. So it needs to be smaller always. If you do a neckband that's the same circumference as your neckline, it's never going to be a good look. So here I'm matching the next quarter. And then the last one here. So you see with the neckline, I did not eyeball these quarters <laughs> like I did on the cuffs. So look, you can see right there from one pin to the next, there's the neckband and then there's excess here because the neckline is bigger. So when I sew this together, I have to stretch it like that and then sew as I meet one pin to the next. And I sew this with a zigzag stitch. It doesn't really matter what quarter you start on. I like to start there. So not where the big bulky seam is at the center back. I don't like starting there. I'm just gonna start here. So it's a 3 8 seam allowance. Put my needle down, get rid of that first pin. I always have the other pin in my hand and I stretch it slightly, the neck band, to match. I also wanna make sure that the shoulder seam is pointing in the right direction so I have my sleeve seam there and I can touch it and I can tell that the seam of the shoulder is coming this way I want to keep that like the same mm -hmm. 
I'm approaching the seam of the neckband right there where that pin is, so I'm just going to slow down there and go over carefully over that bulk. Then I grab my other pin and make sure I'm stretching slightly just to have them both match. I'm approaching the shoulder seam again on the other side. Here is the sleeve and on this case the seam is going that way. So I just want to keep my finger there and make sure it's sewn in the same direction. So if you have a serger, there are lots of people that do this step directly on the serger. They don't sew it on the sewing machine. My serger does not hold a seam. So my serger is just for finishing seams, but it doesn't have the strength to hold a seam. It would be very wonky. So I just sew it on with my normal sewing machine with a narrow zigzag stitch. It's going to stretch and then I go and search the edge just to clean it up. It looks very nice. It's very neat. I never ever go and top stitch there. I think that is done well with a cover stitch. I think with my sewing machine, if I wanted to go and top stitch that down, it would look terrible and it would just ruin the whole top for me. I don't think it's necessary. So you'll never see me top stitch that down like that, never. So what I did was baste, baste up the turn of 3 eighths. I'm doing a narrow hem because it's a curved hem. I don't like wider turns, you know. And I hand basted it and pressed it and now I'm going to go through with twin needle. I have two twin needles. One has a smaller width between each needle and the other one is a bit thicker. Because I'm doing a narrow-ish hem, I'm going to use this one that has the needles closer to each other. I'm going to start sewing where it's black so you won't see it that much. I increase my stitch length to three and a half when I sew with the twin needle. If I place my presser foot on the edge of the fabric, I might not catch the, the hem allowance because it's only 3 eighths. So I'll just move it slightly in there. That's how it's looking and it's catching the other side. That's what I was worried about. Okay, here is where I started. You can see the loose threads. I'm gonna go carefully and stitch right up to there. I'm not gonna go back and forth. I don't want bulk. And I'll take these threads and pull them through to the back and hand knot. Before I show you mine and put it on and everything, I just wanted to show you that I've made little ones too. So the Sloan sweater also comes in girls versions and it's also on sale today for $5. Um, I made them in the same fabric. This is a French Terry I bought specifically for them. This is a size two. My baby niece is about a year and a some old, but she'll fit into this within a blink of an eye. And my older niece, she's five. But I sew her a size 8 because she's much taller than the standard 5 year old. <laughs> and plus it, you know, it can serve her for a bit longer. So I have these two. These are the little girls view A. And they're just as cute as can be. And the construction um, you saw for my one, I don't one is exactly the same. Same precautions. And I showed you two options to sew the cuffs. The first, my preferred, is what is actually the only way to sew a tiny cuff like this. That's why I wanted to show you both. So, um, yeah, super cute. Get them for gifts. Easy fit, relaxed fit. You know, you can make these for little girls in your life and they're going to really love them. So you've seen the process of mine. This is a very unusual mesh. I took a deep dive in my stash to find something that would suit my style to make a sweatshirt. It is not my style to wear a sweatshirt, it is too hot <laughs> and it's just not my style to look that sporty, like to make it out of sweatshirting and with a hood and all that jazz. I would have worn that maybe a few years ago but lately my style has shifted towards more formal. Even when in informal settings I'm usually overdressed but that's how I like it. So I think with this fabric um, that is totally like sewing a knit like you saw, I can get away with wearing it with a skirt and heels and wearing it in like a sporty sort of way. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raining down like hail a week. I have tried to give you my soul. 
So there is my neck band. It's a rib knit material that I specifically bought for doing neck bands. I was really, really fortunate to find some in a shop. Not easy to find, so I got a meter and now I'll have material for neck bands. <laughs> I also did the cuffs with that one. The hem is uh, slightly curved, but I sort of softened the curve on the side a little bit, just out of personal preference. This is how it looks on the inside. There you can see my shoulder stabilized with bias binding. I usually adapt sewing techniques to the fabric and how I want it to look. Of course, I couldn't fuse on the like stay tape. I don't have clear elastic, so this is the way I thought I could stabilize that. It's just a very, very simple top to put together. Usually people start sewing on wovens and I would suggest that, but if you're looking to make your first knit project, I think this would be awesome. And with the help of everything I've shown on the video, I'm sure you can get a really successful project. The neckline is slightly scoot, but it's not low at all. I mean, it's very nice. It's like an inch below the collarbones and that's where I like it. And the rib knit works really well. No gaping, it's just really nice. This is the length I like in the cuffs. If I wouldn't have lengthened it, it would have reached there. But that's just me and my long arms. <laughs> and um, I'll step back so you can see how it looks. I've got it with a skirt on and that is how I would usually wear it. I could even go to church like this. I think this top is brilliant that way. And it's sheer but not that sheer. You can see the hem has been slightly softened, the curve right there. I didn't want it that pronounced. And that's how it looks on the back and it's really stretchy like so comfortable and fit is amazing i hope this was useful for you if you're new to sewing and if you're not that new you might have picked up something along the way as well these two patterns are five dollars each just today friday and if you like them and purchase them through my affiliate link i receive a small commission from that sale at no cost to you Hop over to Claire's channel and see hers. She's made two totally different and you can also see what she has to say. Very different perspective, of course. So hop over there.